Welcome to the College Audition Podcast with your host, nationally renowned college audition coach, Tim Evanicki. Hey everybody, Tim Evanicki here with the College Audition, back again for another episode of the College Audition Podcast. Today my special guest is Danny Gerwin, head of BFA Musical Theater at the University of Arizona. Thanks so much for joining us, Danny. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So my listeners know we always get to know the person before the program, so I want to know all about uh, Danny Gerwin and his illustrious career that led him up to his time at the University of Arizona. Uh, sure. So I uh, I was doing theater ever since I was a little boy. Uh, since I was six, I started doing some professional theater in, in Detroit, where I'm from. And um, as I grew up, I decided to study and major in it. I didn't really know you could do that till I was in high school. And then I went off to the University of Michigan. I'm a Michigan grad. And uh, from there, I went right to New York. Um, and that's around, that's the early 90s. Uh, and uh, started my career. I uh, began uh, working off-Broadway in a, in a four-man Romeo and Juliet retelling, which was really exciting. And then went into A New Brain, the original cast of A New Brain, covering Gordon. And... Uh, and that was fun. And then from there, uh, got my Broadway debut in the Scarlet Pimpernel after that. So mm-hmm. I did Pimpernel. I did the Full Monty. I did Urinetown for a while um, and a bunch of other shows, you know, in between a lot of regional shows as well. Um, I was lucky enough to do a lot of plays as well as musicals. So I always felt that I, you know, had a nice balance in terms of my career uh, and the career goals I set out for myself. Um, you know, a little bit of everything. I touched on sort of everything in my career, a little bit of television right. as well. Uh, after my time in New York, about 12 years in New York, I moved to Los Angeles and, uh, started to do some TV, uh, like Desperate Housewives and some soap operas and things like that. Um, if you, if you squint, you'll sometimes catch me running through the, the screen at Young and the Restless saying, you know, trauma, trauma, I'm a play a doctor, <laughs> Young and the Restless. Um, so things like that. So you, you know, it's been, it's been fun. And then when I was in LA, I started teaching, always did master classes when I was uh, on Broadway and sort of working with students uh, and all that. So I, I really enjoyed that and um, had directed a little bit up until there. And then um, I started teaching more full-time, essentially part-time uh, in LA and then full-time. Uh, I started work at AMDA in LA. It was a new campus at that point. They had just begun out in Los Angeles. So it was exciting to be a part of that and help create curriculum for, for the school there. And, uh, and then I started guesting around the country at different schools. I went back to Michigan and taught at Impulse and uh, directed also at Michigan. Um, and uh, where else? Um, you know, just around the country at different places. Um, some great programs, met some great students, um, learned a lot as I went. Uh, and again, my, my work, uh, you know, everything was sort of a learning lesson. It, it's nice to have, be able to, before I took the position here at Arizona, um, which I came here as a guest professor. They offered me a professorship, uh, professorship for a year, and I took the, uh, took the offer. I thought it would be exciting to see what it would be like. And then essentially, uh, I stayed on. Uh, they offered me the job at the end of my, my time here, and I have been here for 10 years since then, uh, and I'm now an associate professor and head of the musical theater program here. But uh, yeah, I learned a lot along the way. You sort of learn all about rep and how to sort of program classes, how to connect with students of, of different, uh, who have different issues and different, uh, whether it's style or, you know, creating inner life, things like that. So I was very grateful for the, the time that I had in the industry and, of course, outside the industry. I still perform. Uh, I went back to Broadway in 2014 and 2018 to do How the Grinch Stole Christmas at Madison Square Garden. So uh, that was nice to take a little time off and and go back and do that. So I'm still very much a part of the industry and uh, still working. I do concerts and things as well still. Um, So I like to think there's not a thing that I ask my students to do that I couldn't do myself. Um, So it's it's been a a great road. And so here we are, you know, post-COVID, hopefully, fully, uh, now in Arizona. (laughs) Uh, yeah, about 10 years, 10 years. This is my 10th year here, uh, wow. at Arizona. And how long have you been, um, head of musical theater? There? So I've been head of musical theater for the past, I want to say six years, mm-hmm. six years. So I and as far in... as, 
when do the students actually come in contact with you that are there? What are, what are you responsible for teaching? So I teach sophomore performance. So I will, I will meet most of them in the freshman year, of course. Um, but I don't teach them till the sophomore year, sophomore performance. I also do the senior year uh, auditions class. So I work with the sophomores and the seniors mostly. I'll do the senior acting class as well uh, because I direct the showcase. So we'll pull a lot of material from those classes and from the musical theater uh, uh, auditions class for showcase. We'll do big awesome. showcase units on that. So um, that's essentially what I do in the spring term. I also teach musical theater history. So I have connection with juniors and seniors at that point for, uh, for history. Great. Well, we're going to talk about the showcase soon, um, a little bit later here. Um, so I always like to put my guests on the spot, um, which I'm sure that they love. But um, I, we sent ahead the sample questions ahead of time. And, and the question in the, in the sample says, in your own words, describe your program. But I have changed that to now be, I would like your elevator speech, 60 seconds or less. My elevator pitch? On... Yes, your elevator <laughs> pitch on the University of Arizona's BFA musical theater program. You have oh 60 boy. seconds. Sort All of right. sum it up for us and, and pitch it. All right, here we go. Uh, University of Arizona is an integrated acting musical theater program. So students uh, in both disciplines get to experience a wide ar array of, of training. We touch on a little bit of everything. If you want great acting training in terms of Chekhov and Shakespeare that musical theater majors get as well as the acting majors, then this is the school for you. Wow, that was, that. that was only like, that was two floors. I mean, that was barely 60 seconds. Well, you never know how much time ride. you're going to get there. But so, uh... very nicely done, though. Very nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, let's chat a bit about what it looks like the four years. So when a student arrives as a freshman, um, sort of walk us through that arc of, of what they're studying throughout their four years. Sure. Well, they, the, uh, the integrated stuff begins in terms of the acting class and their voice and movement class for the actor. So the students are all together in those classes, and they move uh, through the tracks uh, together in those disciplines. They also have an intro to musical theater uh, class that they'll, they'll do, and from that we build the freshman showcase. So a typical day would have an acting class, and then maybe voice lesson, and then musical theater uh, performance uh, work intro class, which includes some history and um, uh, uh, what else? Uh, history, current events, things like that, um, discussions about the industry and, and just getting them situated in terms of, of basic performance ideas. We, we go through and, and, uh, and uh, talk about sort of basic performance ideas as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then let's see, they, have, uh, they, they dance probably every morning. They take ballet. Um, most students, we, we, we try to get them to take ballet for sure in the freshman year or at least one dance class a term. Um, so, but a, a lot of students will pack in dance as much as they can since they want to take advantage of the dance school that's here. Um, so yeah, it's a busy schedule and then, uh, students will toward the end of the term have rehearsal for the showcase that they'll do. And, uh -huh. um, and we'll take them through that. We'll build that on them, you know, so it, it, it showcases them well. And uh, sure. every year the theme changes. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great, they also, they have their academics, of course, their gen eds that they'll take. We recommend at least two per term just to stay on schedule. So they'll be in a philosophy class. They'll be taking their English. Um, there is a math credit that they need to do. The most students will test out of that credit. Um, so th things like that. So the, the, the freshman year is about getting oriented to campus, to getting oriented to college life, making sure that everyone's uh, you know, wellness is, is in, in place and that they're feeling good about uh, taking on the upper division and upper uh, class curriculum. So you mentioned a freshman showcase, and that's something that some but not all schools do. So can you talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like? Sure. We, uh, we essentially pick a theme each year. Last year, um, the, the theme was um, um, Duke Ellington. Uh, so the students learned all about Duke Ellington. They, they do research reports, and a lot of that research ends up as narration in the show. And then they're assigned certain songs, uh, whether it's solo, duets. There are dance numbers that they'll do as well uh, in terms of reflecting that composer or uh, composing team's career. Uh, the year prior to that, I directed a Bach and Harnick review uh, on the students. And again, we try to fit it to the talents of the students as they come in. You know, Each class has a very unique sort of makeup and feel, and we try to make sure that we, um, we showcase them as, as best we can. 
Um, so students will do research projects. They'll um, they'll they'll come to rehearsal. They'll they'll begin learning about how to uh, mark their music, how to how to, how they learn music, how they rehearse. So we'll take them through you know best practices and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we usually mount it at the end. There are two showcases: one at the end of the fall term and one at the end of the spring term. So. Uh, and that the oh. spring term showcase is an acting showcase. It's scene work from their acting two class. And that's paired with the junior year, or with the sophomores that is, doing checkoff. So it's a great evening of scenes and contemporary scenes from the freshmen and then checkoff scenes from the sophomores. Uh, and then the musical theater showcase is the one that's in the fall for the students. And is that the only performance opportunity for freshmen the first year? Uh, essentially, yeah, those two showcases, uh, that's mm -hmm. what we try to try to give them. And then they essentially will uh, observe, uh, they'll observe auditions uh, in terms of the upper division, upper level uh, uh, ART, Arizona Repertory Theater is the company for the actors. So they'll, they'll watch auditions, they will serve as crew, they have to get their crew credits out of the way freshman year. So they'll actually crew the shows, uh, which is so that in the sophomore year they can be begin performing in them. And you mentioned dance classes. Do you allow students to level out of dance or up in dance classes? We do. Yeah, there's actually a placement audition at the top of the term, at the top of each term, right. so the students can audition for placement in the, I believe it's A, B, and C sections over in the dance school. Um, in in the in the musical theater styles classes, we do hear the students are leveled in terms of they're all together in class, but they're they're given different levels of work to do, whether it's a single pirouette, you do a double, you do triple, that kind of thing. But uh, the dance school does level them. So there's an opportunity to dance with dance majors in some of those upper level classes as well. So let's keep walking through the student experience there. Um, freshman year's over, going into sophomore year. Um, what do students have to look forward to in their sophomore year? So they look forward to, uh, they'll be performing on the main stage, so they get to begin auditioning. So at the top of the term, the first day of class, they there we have our company auditions for the season. So they'll audition for the fall shows anyway. They'll audition for it. They'll be called back. A lot of sophomores are cast as understudies, so they'll understudy a principal role, and sometimes they're cast in the show or in the ensemble of a show. So there's that to look forward to. Then the callback for the spring uh, shows are done in around November, around Thanksgiving. So there's a second. So there's a opportunity every term to be cast in something. Um, so everyone gets that um, is guaranteed some sort of uh, role, which is which is really nice. So the training can, the practical application of the training can sort of be done, and we can be there to supervise it. Uh, students will start musical theater performance work formally uh, with me uh, in what we call musical theater one. So we'll work on that, and that's um, working in the given circumstances of the songs that they're assigned. Uh, they'll be able to, we do audition units as well. We start them right away with an audition unit. So with so many students auditioning for summer stocks and, and with Zoom auditions coming up, you know, everywhere in every which way now, um, we try to make sure the students are prepared. So we do that right away as well. Each, each term, they'll do some sort of audition prep work so that by the time they hit the senior year, they are ready to audition. They feel strongly. Their book is, is, is begun to be built already. We're not just starting from scratch when we hit the senior year. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have that to look forward to. They continue their acting track. They'll start um, in terms of checkoff work, which is a very exciting time, I think. So the concentration on the acting work is, is really important here. Everything We see everything through the lens of the actor at Arizona. So that even musical theater performance work, I mean, you'll, you have your voice lessons as well, that they'll continue on in the sophomore year. Um, but we really look at, in terms of performance work, how to connect to, how to connect those two things, how to really bring uh, performances to life in an authentic and honest and um, exciting way. So that's, mm -hmm. that's sort of the lens through which we work. Beautiful. And uh, now junior and senior year, wrapping up their time there. Um, what sort of projects and things do they work on? So this one, it gets really good. They'll be cast on the main stage. Usually juniors and seniors all get roles in some way, in some show. Now, remember, they can be cast in the plays as well. So a musical theater major, for example, could be in a play, could, be, could get a role or a lead in a show like that, uh, and then be in the musical the following term, or vice versa. We've had acting majors that have been in the musicals as well. So they have that, uh, junior and senior year. Again, they're getting their gen eds ticked off while they go through 
uh, all of this. Um, we also advise the students every term, so we make sure that everything is taken care of in terms of what they need to have for the next, in terms of prereqs and all that, so for the next class. So we check in with them every term about where they are and how they're doing. Um, making sure that everything's well with them in every sense of that word. Um, junior year, they will start Shakespeare performance. Uh, so all the acting majors and musical theater majors will be together in Shakespeare class. And then their voice and movement work is continuing there too. And that's also focused on Shakespeare and on, on that kind of text. Uh, in the spring term of junior year, they work on Commedia and uh, uh, start to get into sort of on-camera work. Uh, and sitcom sort of work and commedia characters and commedia dell'arte and how it's how really what that is is the archetypes that we know from sitcoms and all that so there's that transition that we make um, so it's a fun time they um, they they're continuing to dance so they have their musical theater styles classes that they're they're dancing in of course that's sophomore year and junior year as well and um, and they can retake class if they want to, so they can take a class again for credits, or they don't need the credit necessarily. They can audit a class, so uh, we try to give them the opportunity to do that if they can fit it into their schedule. Uh, so we try to keep it balanced for all of them. Um, a lot of students will um, are in the honors college, so they'll they'll take honors credits in classes, which is usually an extra project or something that we'll give them, and. Um, as they lead to their senior year, which is um, essentially more of the same. They'll, there's casting opportunities in the shows. Uh, we do our best to, you know, we want to cast the best people that are the most prepared, and uh, but we, we do certainly give deferential uh, to the seniors. We, we really want to make sure that they have opportunities along with the juniors. So the seniors, again, perform. Um, they'll be in their upper division performance classes. They have the auditions class where we build their books. We'll be working on the showcase in the senior year. Um, again, their acting class will come back to contemporary realism as we work on showcase. So we sort of bring it full circle back to where, uh, you know, more contemporary work uh, on camera work is something that we'll focus on as well in the senior year. And um, uh, again, they'll still be dancing. They can, you know, there's advanced tap that they can take, uh, things like that. Uh, so there's there's lots of opportunity for them, and they can sort of make it look any way they want to, as long as they're okay. they've got their credits for the degree checked off, and we make sure that that's happening every term with them when we when we uh, advise them. Um, they can fit in whatever they want, um, and a lot of students will. I know this might be a question for later, but a lot of students will fit in a minor or even a double major. Um, Mm -hmm. or what we call a dual degree. We can chat about that now. Sure. So that's that's sort of what it looks like for the four years. I mean, it's exactly yeah. what you'd think. We build on the foundation work that they, they set up in the freshman and sophomore years for their work as upperclassmen. Um, and most most of the universities, the bigger universities, uh, uh, you know, there's plenty of room for students to do minors and on mm -hmm. occasion a double major and a BFA. And you just said double major. So I'm going to mm -hmm. let you talk about that a little bit more because normally... The question is to me is always, you know, am I allowed to? Is it is it possible to double major? And I always say, possible and probable are two different things. Right. So, yeah. tell me what tell me what that looks like for minors and and potential double majors. Sure. Well, a minor is essentially nineteen additional credits in a in a subject area. So, students who come in with credit or AP credits or who find themselves ahead, who maybe stack their credits and take a lot of academics at the top of their in their freshman and sophomore years might have room in the junior and senior year for those additional credits and they can declare a minor at that point. We encourage it. We, again, it's, this is a tier one research university. So we encourage students to, to, to vary their, their ideas and their training and their uh, uh, opportunities as much as possible. Um, so a student who, a dual degree is going to be harder. Again, you're getting another 125 credits or so in another degree. So students who come in with a lot of credits uh, who want to do summer terms as well, there's the best way to do it is to pick up classes during the summer as well. A lot of those can be online. We also have what we call winter terms, which are mini terms. They're six-week terms where you do essentially double the work in half the time. Uh, so students can take pick up a class there that they'll take just for six weeks that'll serve them toward their their minor or their double major. You can't really double major in anything uh, within, if you're a BFA acting or musical theater major, you can't also do tech. 
You can't do design and, and technology. It has to be something outside of the School of Theater and Film and Television, uh, usually, though some students are film minors. Uh, they enjoy that. There's the, the production side of it and, of course, the, um, the research side. Um, a lot of students will do creative writing. We have students that have done um, business. We have students that do marketing, that do journalism. Um, so there's there's lots of opportunity for them to do that and um, if it's something they want to do we will help them we have great advisors in addition to the faculty we have uh, advisors in the school that can help them work out exactly where to fit all this in and, and make up a plan for their four years if they want to graduate in four years as opposed to taking say a fifth year then we can do it we will help them make that happen um, all yeah. while you know you have to be motivated because you still have rehearsals every night uh, you still have, you know, shows that you'll do. So all those credits continue on, all the stuff we talked about just before this, in addition to all that extra academic work. But it's very mm -hmm. possible here. So um, we we kept touching on performance opportunities and things throughout this, but let's let's actually lay it out. What is what is the performance opportunities look like year by year um, for students at Arizona? Well, in a typical year, we'll do six shows in a year. We'll do three each term. Uh, and usually there's a musical in each term uh, we'll do, and then two plays uh, uh, around that. And, and then we'll vary the styles of those plays. So we'll do everything from Craig Lucas and Reckless and Proof to doing um, The Learned Ladies and, and things like that. Um, there's always a Shakespeare show usually in the term. This next year is a little different because of coming back from COVID. We're ramping back up with just four shows. Um, which we still haven't announced yet. We're making sure that performance opportunities can be actually done before we, before we make that announcement. But, but right. yeah, usually it's six shows a term. So students have an opportunity, again, a wide array of opportunities in terms of where they can be cast and the kind of work they can be exposed to and, and get to perform in and get to work in. So a student may find themselves, a musical theater major may find themselves in the middle of a play trying to figure out you know exactly how to apply all that they've learned in class, uh, but it's about giving them that opportunity so that they feel like as well-rounded an actor as possible, so they're not afraid of anything. So that when their agent someday says, "Hey, can you audition? You interested in the Shakespeare play?" They can say, "Yeah," because they have training in it. They have monologues prepared, um, in addition to all the work they would say do in musicals. So it's something that we are very proud of uh, in terms of getting students ready for the industry. And speaking of the getting them ready for the industry, um, let's chat about that senior showcase that we touched on briefly. What do you, well, this is an interesting question, what you have done in the past for senior showcase and yeah. what you'll do from this point forward for senior showcase, maybe two different things, but can you chat a bit about your senior showcase? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, in the past, uh, we have uh, brought agents and casting directors, managers to campus. We have done a live performance on campus. We do that in January of the spring term. So everything's prepared in the fall term. And then we, we give performances of the showcase on campus, flying all these people in. And then we hold callbacks for showcase right here on campus in our offices. So we can help mentor the students through the beginning of that process, which can be a little scary, as opposed to taking them to the city and saying, okay, you're done, off you go, figure it out. <laughs> um, so we, we like to do that. That's how we've done it in the past. Now, this past year, uh, we actually filmed Showcase. Uh, it was a virtual showcase. Um, and we've had a lot of great response to it. So I think it's shifting now to more of an online showcase because we can post it on breakdown services. Uh, casting directors and agents from all over the country can look at it. The exposure is actually greater and we've gotten a lot of great um, response from the showcase that we filmed. Um, and so I think we're leaning in that direction. I can't say positively how we'll do it. I think in an ideal world, we would film the showcase and we'd be able to post it. So for that sort of national uh, 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 recognition, and then we'd also do something on campus as well. Uh, some sort of live event to celebrate showcase, whether it's for donors or whether we fly certain people in just to look at it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure just yet, but we're working on sort of that, what the ideal combination of those things are. Um, so that's, yeah. that's sort of where it is at the moment. Um, but I think that's the way most schools are leaning at this point. So I think it'll be interesting to see where we go in the next couple of years with, with all that stuff. But we do have that showcase and we do have a lot of success from it. 
So I actually had a student, um, a former student from here in Orlando that just graduated this past year. And I was noticing um, he was putting things out on Facebook that he was doing this um, uh, show with one other person on, on Jewish composers. Um, so is that something that they just took the initiative to do themselves or is that part of the, the degree or? Oh, that was part of actually an honors college thesis. So, uh, oh, students, okay. yeah, so students, we have a great honors college here. And again, in terms of driven academic uh, students, if students are driven enough and want to join the honors college, which a lot of our students do, we had, I think, more than half the senior class. So that's about eight or nine students uh, in the honors college last year, which was very exciting. So essentially, um, the honors college works in terms of graduating with honors. You would petition certain classes. You have to have a certain number of honors credits. So you can petition your teacher, even in musical theater performance, I can, they can ask me um, if they can do the class for honors, which means that they'd have to do a special project in the class. So instead of saying one song, I'd assign them three songs for an arc and for one of the units that they do. So they'd have to do extra work on that uh, and uh, be graded on that accordingly. Um, so it works that way in academic classes as well. Sometimes there's an extra paper. Uh, I had some petition students in uh, petitioning for musical theater history honors. So they wrote extra papers, they wrote extra responses to, to questions that were posed. Um, and then in the senior year, they actually have the opportunity to do some sort of thesis project. And so because they're musical theater majors or acting majors, they put together, uh, essentially what they did last year was put together a, a, a a cabaret regarding Jewish composers in the American musical theater. Um, and then uh, they find a supervisor, uh, one of their professors to supervise them. So we took them through, you know, we work with them all term. The fall term is all research. The spring term begins rehearsals for it. Um, so, yeah, we had a lot of thesis projects that we did. Um, and we find performance venues for them. We help them sort of uh, sculpt and shaped, uh, shape the, the, um, the subject matter accordingly. And that's sort of what that performance was. So, uh, and then because we were on Zoom, we were able to um, uh, put it on Zoom and put it on the uh, for uh, for watching uh, for their friends and family around the country. Since we couldn't really gather in person for them, um, mm. so that's those what those projects were. So it's it's a perk of the honors college essentially. Interesting. I didn't know it was on Zoom. I guess I should have probably watched it. Whoops. Sorry, well, Tony. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. It was very good. It was it was excellent. We had some excellent work being shown. So that was that was nice. So talk to us about some notable alum or faculty that you, you have there. Uh, well, I'm very I love the faculty here. I'm very proud of my my colleagues. Um, we're all working professionals. Uh, we I think it's it's one of the things that that separates Arizona from other schools. I mean it sounds so cheesy to say we really care, but we really do work with students every term. I mean, our doors are always open uh, in terms of office hours, in terms of connecting with students about their their projects, their work, uh, mental health stuff, uh, whatever it is that they need. And if we can't help them, we will send them to someone who can. Um, there's lots of um, um, different uh, uh, things on campus that we can we can connect them with. Um, uh, in terms of notable alum, um, Ben Crawford is currently playing the Family Opera, uh, so he'll be back in Phantom this fall. Um, uh, Tamika Lawrence is doing very well in New York as well. Um, Kyle Harris uh, in L.A. is doing some great work. Um, Vanessa Vidato uh, just did an episode of Hacks. If you go to our Instagram, uh, we usually post a lot about the alum and, uh, and all the work that they're doing. So there's some great stuff going on. We've got a lot of students doing summer stock this year. Uh, at the hangar uh, in Texas, you know, all around for theaters that are just starting to come back. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there, there's notable stuff there. And I think there's notable work and teaching being done on campus. And, and we're all essentially on the same page. I think we connect well. So a student is not hearing, you know, we're building on the same foundation work. So, so we try to eliminate that idea of two teachers saying, oh, forget everything you learned last term. Do it this way. So that's not sort of how we how we roll here. We we try to make sure that we're building on exactly what the students uh, got the former term, or in terms of concurrent classes, we're making sure that they're hearing things and making sure that the that the techniques that they're learning are consistent. Hmm. So, uh, University of Arizona is in Tucson. 
Um, and if you can chat a little bit about what it looks like um, for, for students who, you know, want to leave the campus every now and then and do something in the area, um, what is student life like living there? Um, well, we always, when students ask, we always uh, connect them with students currently in the program. So any student that's interested in Arizona, we will most likely, you know, have you talk to other students so you can really find mm -hmm. out from their perspective, what it's like. So that's something we like to do. Um, but I would say it's, um, you know, it's really, it's a, it's a, not a huge town. It's a medium sized city, I think. Uh, the campus U of A is at the center of Tucson. It's sort of the whole central area of the city. And you can't really go any place in Tucson without there being, and even the surrounding cities that are around it, you know, where people head to for hiking and, and all sorts of stuff like that, uh, you, where you won't see the, the Arizona A or Wildcats or flags in people's driveways. I think that the city is very proud of the university in, in all sorts of ways. So I've never seen that so much uh, as I do here in Arizona uh, in terms of the, the, the college. But um, for students, there's... Um, so there's all the stuff on campus that they can do, and there's, I think, 300 to 400 clubs they could join, of course. There's all sorts of uh, things outside of the School of Film and uh, Theater and Television. Um, but we have a great downtown area, which is funky and cool. We actually have a streetcar that goes from campus to that area, so they could take the streetcar down to uh, the downtown area, and there's great restaurants. Uh, it's, it's a food capital because a lot of chefs from L.A. will come to Tucson to start up their restaurants or use pop-up restaurants here. Uh, so there's some great food here. Um, uh, we like to say, uh, you know, there's, there's yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a pretty fun town. I mean, I think they, um, uh, there's hiking again. So uh, we have mountain paths and trails all over outside, outside of Tucson so students can drive up. There's even some, not even 20 minutes away from campus that they could drive to and sort of hike. Um, beautiful sunsets yeah. here. Again, it's desert climate, so it's not too uh, hot, except right now in the summer, it's a little hot. It's about 113 <laughs> at the moment. Uh, no, um, thank you. But during the school year, it sort of sits at a comfortable 70 to 80 degrees. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't really have snow. Once in a blue moon, it will, it will snow here uh, for about 10 right. minutes or so. Uh, we enjoy that when it happens. Um, but, um, yeah, so student life sort of looks like that. It's, it's, it's for an outdoorsy, uh, students, um, students, you know, they bike across campus. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And you mentioned that it's, it's right in the center of the city, but it's not an urban campus. It's, it's still very much a classic college campus. Oh yes. Still very much. Yeah. And, Everything that's on campus yeah. is within walking distance. Again, the, the buildings are all beautifully sort of situated. Uh, it's a lovely, lovely campus. There's a mall area that you would find on yeah. other campuses as well. Um, so yeah, so it's it's a very walkable, uh, comfortable, safe uh, environment in terms of campus life. Wonderful. Let's switch gears and talk about auditions. Um, oh, good. University of Arizona is a very popular school um, amongst my students, at least, um, that come through. It's Arizona is usually on their list. Um, Let's chat numbers first. Um, how many applications uh, did you receive last year? So we received about 700 plus applications last year. Um, and, and, everything that last year was, and that was including pre-screens. Yeah. So that was the, okay. the start of the season for us. Um, mm -hmm. And again, everything was done online last year, which is not the case again that coming up this year. We'll come back to some in-person stuff we can talk about. But so about 700 plus. And then from those pre-screens, how many people did you see live? So well, from live, the Zoom this year. on Zoom, yeah, exactly. We uh, <laughs> saw about 200 to 300. So we cut that list essentially in half for the most part, maybe a little, a little deeper than that. Um, so about 200 students or so in terms of callbacks. And then we try to form a class of 16. Um, we can go up to 18. We try to keep it small. Again, the student-teacher ratio is very, very strong here. You have a faculty of eight professors uh, in terms of, and you have about 16 students in each class. So it's a really nice ratio in terms of uh, attention and individual mm -hmm. contact hours and, and all that. So starting with a group of 700 um, and getting it down to 16, um, what are the things that are going to catch your eye when you're either looking at pre-screens or in live auditions? 
Um, I, you know, we look for students that are, that are interesting, that are curious, that are themselves, uh, that are very much, um, that have something unique to say about their work. I, I always look at the, the songs they choose, for example, and, and what it says about their worldview and sort of how they think it connects to their, to themselves. You know, you should, you should know someone better by the time they're done with an audition, even 16 bars. I should, I should get a sense of who you are by the time you're finished. So we really look for students that connect in that way um, to their music and to their monologues and um, have something to say with that work. Um, but yeah, a curious student. Um, we look for nice people. Uh, <laughs> it's always, I mean, it sounds <laughs> silly, but, but we look for students that are kind and compassionate and really empathetic and really understand how to um, how to be vulnerable and connect to their work in a way that that um, that sometimes a, a really highly polished student may not do. They may sort of lack that true sort of authenticity. So we we do our best, and and if we see that, you know, we'll give a note sometimes and ask for you know a change or an adjustment of some kind. And that's always a good thing, by the way. You know, getting an adjustment from a panel is always a good thing. It shows that they're actually yeah. interested. It's not never a bad thing. So we will do that when we need to and uh, try to bring out those qualities that we're interested in seeing. So who sits on that panel? Who are the decision makers on the faculty? How many people? So right now we have, um, again, the faculty's uh, eight. We had uh, four people on the panel. This Is that true? One, two, three, five. We had five of the professors of eight on the panel uh, okay. this past year. Uh, and that's sort of the audition committee that we formed. Uh, I believe it will be that way again next year uh, in terms of five performers. So you have musical theater faculty, you have acting faculty, uh, you have uh, our dance our dance faculty, uh, uh, dance musical theater dance teacher. Um, you have voice and movement represented, and then you have uh, their voice lessons, their voice teacher and or our vocal coach who uh, coaches the seniors through their audition material and uh and all that so every sort of facet of the um of the training is represented in some way so that and then we score everyone blindly uh you know we don't sort of all get together and and figure out what it is we think is best we we score them individually and uh and then we calculate scores later so we won't see them until they're all calcul calculated and that's how we begin to sort of make the um the uh uh progression to our our 16. And do all five, I'm always curious to know this, do all five of those faculty members see every pre-screen video? Yep. <laughs> it's a lot. Wow. It's a lot. Yeah, we, we do. So Because that way, part of our callback, what we like to do is we, we ask actually ask students to perform one piece that's different, something they didn't do in their pre-screen package, so we can see them in, in a fresh way when we're live with them. And um, that way we all know what it is they, they did before, how it compares to what they're doing, if, they, if, they've, uh, if they're able to connect in a new way to this piece. Uh, then we'll ask for new pieces or we'll ask for, you know, we'll ask for a different piece or an adjustment or something. But, um, so it's part of what we do to make sure that what we see and what we noted that was maybe well-polished and well-prepared on a pre-screen can actually be repeated uh, live. And, uh, and, and some students are so much better live you know what i mean they have an opportunity in terms of those pre-screens you know um or sometimes it's it's the opposite where this pre-screen is so polished but in person they're they're not necessarily connected to the material in that way so we want to make sure right. that they they're they're as authentic to themselves as possible and we want to give them as much opportunity as possible to show us that I've actually not asked this question to any other school, but it just popped into my brain and it'd be interesting to hear the answer. What is something that students shouldn't do? What's something not to do when they're auditioning for you? What's a mistake that you see a lot? Oh, a mistake. Um, I think it's, it's, it's not listening. <laughs> you know, the panel, you know, we'll know who's coming in. I mean, they, and students slate and all that. That's fine. Of course. Um, but I think it's it's connecting with the the room. I mean, whether it's a Zoom room or uh, the panel live, you know, we'll we'll ask certain questions, or and students get so nervous they sometimes will um, 
not answer the question or they'll they have a they have their slate prepared so they'll reintroduce themselves live and sometimes we we say we know that we just we just saw you we we know your name no talk to <laughs> us here try this again and this time oh. just try to relax and here sit down you'll be far less nervous um, yeah. So we, we do our best to make sure the students are comfortable and uh, um, and uh, don't psych themselves out. I think if anything, that's the the thing I'd say not to do. Try to try to be your weird, funny, crazy self, and that's sort of what we like to see. That's um, and hopefully your material in some way reflects those things, so that we get a right. real sense of of who you really are. Um, and uh, yeah, I like I like an odd I like an oddball. Um, we all do. Know, we all do. That's, so, if people didn't like oddballs, none of us would have careers. None of us would be here. At all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, thank you so much for sitting down with us today and walking us through the University of Arizona's BFA Musical Theater Program. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you around, and, and I hope to have you back for some workshops real soon. Awesome! Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, um, thank you. You have a good day. All right. For more information on the exciting training, workshops, and masterclasses offered by The College Audition, please visit us online at www.thecollegeaudition.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok.